All right, today, guys, we're going to be looking at a problem where the odometer in this Cavalier is not visible. It looks like it's burned out. And, and the problem is, you know, normally when you push this button, you should see this light up. And if I do push it with the flashlight here, you can see the numbers are there. They're just not very readily visible because the backlight is burned out. So I'm going to show you how you can repair that. We're going to have to pull the cluster from outside the dash. So what we're going to end up having to do to do that is inside here, we're going to take this top cover off of the dash. And then we're going to take this trim plate off of here so that we can access the instrument cluster. So let me get my tools and we'll show All right, we'll start on the passenger side, take a trim tool and remove this cover. And then with that cover out of the way, you take a seven millimeter socket and we're just after this one bolt right here at the top. And then after we take this guy out, we're going to take um, very similar size bolts off in the glove box area. So I open up the glove box and I'm going to put a different kind of connector on here like this or after this guy right here and this guy right here. And after this, let me get a flashlight and I'll show you. There's two more that are holding the bracket that's part of the airbag cover. And you can see these guys right in here, and they're also seven millimeter. Just so you don't drop them behind, I recommend trying to take like a little magnet you can put on them while you take them out, just so you don't drop them. All right, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna need both hands for that, so I'm not gonna film getting these two out, but we'll take these two out, and then I'll show you the one on the other side. Also, guys, uh, I missed one this small screw that goes in the back that holds this air conditioning vent in place. You need to take that one out too. So it's one, two, three, and then the two the bracket. All right, now let's go on the driver's side. All right, so now we're on the driver's side. Same thing. We're going to take a trim tool and we're going to remove this little cover. And again, we're going to have a small seven millimeter bolt that we're going to want to remove. This one here, in this case. Not the gold one, but the gray one. All right, now with these guys removed, we'll be able to lift up the top dash cover. Trim tool, because there's a clip also associated with this right here. You need to pop off. And then now the next thing we're going to do, after we got this popped, we got to take a Phillips screwdriver, take this cover off, and then we're going to get two more bolts in the back here. Now when you're doing what I was doing before, you know, I know this car pretty good. Just make sure you don't pull up too hard on it to pop the clips in the front before you remove what I'm moving now. All right, so this guy's just held in by a couple of retainers. And then we have our last couple of these seven millimeter bolts. Now, you know, yours may be in really bad shape cracks wise because that's a common problem on these Cavaliers. Fortunately, this guy has had a pretty pampered life. So the only thing that's really cracked is this back piece. This guy here doesn't have really any cracks to speak of. Can't really get that uh, in there, so I'm going to switch to this. And once we get this last bolt out, we can pick up and remove this cover. It just slips, on, slips in underneath the, 
cracked part that's against the glass. Just go slow so you don't drop anything down the defroster vent. The other thing I'll point out is the screw on the left is usually shorter than the screw on the right if it's the original equipment. So keep them sorted for yourself. All right. Now we can lift up more aggressively and take this guy out of the vehicle. Can sit it aside and then continue. The next thing we're going to do is remove this piece here. I get my socket on a, a driver to do that. There's a bolt right here. And again, they're all. Uh, seven millimeter. And then there's one all the way over here on the driver's side. That removed. I think that's it. I'm just making sure. Yep, there's one more right here. So it's three total. Hopefully you guys can see that. Because I can't. Now, now this guy's ready to pop off from the radio area, but he's going to be held on with a connection for the cigarette lighter or the accessory power, whatever you want to call it. And then he's going to be held on with a connection over here for the headlight dimmer switch. So we're going to need to disconnect these two as well. So it's helpful if you have tilt wheel to lower it a little bit. We're just going to pop it off. From the little clips that hold it. You're going to have to reach behind and give this guy a little squeeze to remove this one. And then on this side, We'll probably, uh, let's pause and come over to the other side so you can All right, see. so this guy, just take a small flathead screwdriver. Give it a little twist up so you can clear the uh, retainer. Now I'm going super gentle with this because it's old and I don't want it to break. So if you're wondering why I'm taking a long time to do that, all oh, this plastic is kind of old. All right, so now we've got this cleared. And to get our cluster, we just got a couple more things. We've got another seven here. And we saw the millimeter rather. And another one on the right. out landed on the radio all right at this point the cluster is you know just held in with these two little alignment pins on the bottom and it comes right out and then you could disconnect it so what I'm going to do though is I'm going to disconnect it by pressing this tab and then wiggling this harness connector loose what I'm going to do first is we're going to take this black plastic cover off the back. And you're going to, you're going to note that this tab, that this retaining tab that we use to connect this in, 
and the connectors that we have here line up with the middle. So you've got a space, two rows of connectors and a space. And so even though you can see some, some connectors here, this only lines up with the jacks in the middle, right? And then the reason I'm doing that in this connector here, uh, latches right here, is after I take this back cover off, we're going to hook this up again. So we're going to take our flathead screwdriver and we're going to prise this little cover off. Very gently. Again, because of the uh, age of the plastic. Now, this particular repair we're going to do, there's two ways to do it. I'm going to be showing you the component level repair. The bulb that's burned out is soldered on the circuit board that's under this cover. And we're just going to unsolder the old one and solder a new one in. But you could at this point, if you didn't have the desire to do this repair, you could just swap out the cluster with the new one. The odometer reading is not stored in the cluster on these vehicles. It's stored in the body control module. So the cluster is pretty much a, a, a dumb module in that sense. All right, so what we're, what we're suggesting is that the odometer is this bulb here that's burned out. You can see, see kind of like the round outline and the two pins. And there's a couple of these bulbs. There's one there and one there to light up this particular gauge. Um, there's at least one there. There's one there, one there. There's probably another one that I'm missing. And, and what we want to try and do, the reason I asked you to take note of how that connected back in, is we're going to hook this guy back up. Hopefully, we can uh, have enough darkness before the problem was not enough light. Now the problem is we want actually to have it be kind of dark. And it probably is just not dark enough to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive this into the garage so you can see what I'm trying to do here. But we're trying to see how many of these other bulbs might be burned out before we take it apart. Let me just pull it into where it's a little bit darker and we'll do this again. All right, much better in the dark here. So now we're going to turn the headlights on and we got the illumination lit up. And so we can check these bulbs, right? So we see this one's lit and this one's lit. This one and this one, this one and this one. So the only one that's out is this dark area behind the odometer. So that's good. That means we don't have to do any other repairs. The reason I was doing this is if we're going to go in here and take this apart to change this one, we might as well see if there's any other of these bulbs burned out too. So again, there's, there's two here, one and one, one and one, one and one. So there's a total of six of these bulbs. The seventh one lights the odometer. So we've done our test. We know it's just the one bulb. Let's get it out and change it. All right, we've got this guy on the bench. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to separate the front lens cover from the assembly. You can usually do this with just your fingers. Just pushing this in here, pushing these tabs out. This guy will come out with a little spring. You can just keep them together like that. We'll clean them later. All right, so the next thing in order to actually get to the board is we're going to have to remove the needles. Anything that's not on a zero with these stepper motors, I like to mark the position and put it back exactly the way it was. So, you know, you put the vehicle in the normal position that it would be in. And just take a magic marker, whatever you want. You're going to take note of what it was. It's just in case, it's just to try and help make sure that it, it goes back exactly the way you found it. I see this one here kind of moved on me. I don't think the temperature one matters. We'll mark it just in case. Okay, and then to get these guys off, just take a plastic fork, slide it underneath, and just prise them off. And just be gentle with it. They haven't been off before, they're going to be on there kind of tight. Like this one here certainly hasn't 
been off before, but eventually if you can get the, the fork all the way to the back, it'll let go. Same with this guy here. This is probably just not the, the best fork I could have grabbed. I'm going to say that I highly recommend a Chick-fil-A fork for this, but I didn't have one handy. Much stronger plastic than whatever this guy is. If you can't get it in there, you might have to use your finger or something. Yeah, let me go get a better plastic fork. This one is uh, just too soft, too soft for this job. Hold on a second. Okay, mark of quality, precision tool. This guy's a, just a much harder plastic and you'll have a better job of getting, or easier job rather, of getting it off. And then we get the last one's the fuel gauge. Okay, now with all of those guys off, we can remove the um, circuit board. So you can see these are the bulbs I was talking about. And we checked all those guys out, and they were fine. And the one we want is underneath this assembly. Now, there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could try to desolder this whole strip. I really don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two tabs. You can see here they're holding it to the circuit board. And between pushing on the back and pushing on the front, I'm going to get them to let go of the circuit board, right, like so. And I'm just going to slowly bend this forward, very slowly, so that I can get access to this bulb. And then I'm going to desolder this bulb and put a new one in there. So let me get my desoldering gear. All right, we're going to uh, desolder this guy now. The gun's all heated up. These pins are bent like this. Sometimes you have to kind of give them a bend up first. Just trying to make sure we got all that off the side that bled through. Hopefully at this point, put the gun back over here. We should be able to dislodge our old bulb. There he is. So they're inside, you know, kind of like this little plastic that you can see is just crumbling apart. Crumble this all off. Just to show you what kind of bulbs. And I'll link the kind of bulbs this takes in the description. But you can see that this is a little bit, this is bigger than a grain of wheat type bulb. This is a, you know, just shy of five millimeters. The Chinese would call this five millimeters. So that's what we're going to put on here. Five millimeter replacement bulb. 14 volt DC. All right, so we're just going to uh, get any of the little pieces of that broken uh, case off, and then we want to make sure that our leads are not twisted at all because we don't have that little case to prevent that, that little plastic white case. And we're just going to feed this guy back in, pull him forward and bend the leads back. Now before I solder them on, I'm gonna work him into this little housing. Like so. And then we're gonna put this back into the position it's supposed to be in, okay? Now at this point, if we solder this guy up, we should be all set. Just need to get a little bit of solder from my drawer down here. and let the gun heat up. And then we'll be ready to reassemble everything. And what we'll do before we put it all back together, we'll plug it in just like you saw at the beginning to make sure that um, everything's lighting up okay.
try to get a little bit more of a tint on this. For some reason it's not heating up my iron today. There it goes. Waiting for the gauge to show the right temperature. some debris on there that I want to look at just to see what that might be. We'll just give them a clean with some alcohol before we clump the leads. All right, now we're ready to test it. All right, guys, I'm going to show you a little shot in the microscope here. You can see where this particular um, connector, the heat damage, has actually loosened things, right? So the traces are just not fully staying on even after we solder them. So I'm actually going to be applying some adhesive to both of these just to shore it up from vibration on the road so that the repair holds up. Then we'll put it back in the vehicle. All right, we've got this um, repaired now. Like I said, you know, I just put a little bit of adhesive on there to help with the uh, movement and the vibration where that tracing had loosened itself up. Now I'm just going to clean off any dust that we have here since we got this guy all apart. It's a good time to do that. And then we're going to position... Our, our needles back where they go. Now, I'm not going to push these on all the way because until we get it in the vehicle, there's a possibility that it, it may um, shift a little bit, but I'm just going to get it on enough to where it's in the position where I think it should be. So these guys here, I'm going to push these guys onto zero. Again, just putting them on a little bit push this guy to the mark that we made. You gotta be careful that you actually get it on the, the little pin of the stepper motor too. There's a lot of wiggle room around inside here with this thing that you can actually end up missing it and not even have it on there. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk over to the vehicle and we're gonna make sure this all looks legit, zero, zero, and the pin and the marks that we made, and then we'll push them on the rest of the way and then we'll snap the cover back on. So let's go do that. Okay, we've plugged it in. As you can see, we've got our odometer. Whoops, we've got our odometer working. Um, and now what we're doing is just trying to make sure that everything is zeroed in. So this one looks okay, this one does not. So I'm gonna pull him out a little bit and I'm just gonna move him back over to get him on zero. The other guys I did before I started filming to get them where we wanted them to go. On the temperature gauge, this one, you know, it's possible because it reads at a certain time when we had the engine on, and then the time we did the repair, the engine's cooled off. This one may not be on the mark you made. I would tell you to go with whatever it wants to line it up to and not try to center it on this. But the fuel, you definitely want it back where you were, and on these two, you definitely want it back to zero. So now that we got um, this done, we can go ahead and push these in all the way. What I'm going to do then is take it back to the bench, and we'll put the rest of the assembly back on. All right, guys, so all we're doing now is I'm just um, making sure we've blown all the dust off before we put this guy back on the top. This just snaps in. Just make sure that all the tabs click. And then the last thing to do is to put the, the cover that we took off in the car that covers the circuit board, and then we're ready to reinstall it. So let's go do that. All right, you just put this cover back on that we took off, snapping it back into position. And now we can come over here and reconnect for the last time our harness. Reposition these two little white guys into the alignment pinholes. ready to just reconnect our bolts. All right, so we can see we fixed our odometer. We got our trip meter working just fine now. And that's all the problem was. So hope this helps you out. If you got any questions about this repair, drop them in the comments. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.